What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to do more of a different video. I've kind of alluded to in the past that I want to start transitioning this channel financial journey to what I'm actually investing in because right now I cover a lot of EVs and many of them I kind of lost the passion for. I, I don't really believe in the fundamental business. I still just cover them for the mere basis of it and one of which is like charge point and many things like that that I'm truly not investing in so I want to start doing more videos on what I'm kind of doing generally and I have a whole account just dedicated for options I, I do talk on options quite a lot and I think that they're very important a lot of people should definitely know them so I want to start going over my weekly options what I'm doing stocks I'm looking at and everything else and I can do periodic ones and kind of just add them to my day-to-day -day videos but I want to go over some stocks that I watch every single week that you guys should add to your watch list so don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe and with that let's get right to it so starting off when it comes down to options i ideally sell both calls and puts my goal at the end of the day is to collect premiums if at the end it's exercised then so be it then i just uh, i just kind of adjust accordingly and whatever else but my main goal is to be risk adverse and just to collect premiums so what does that mean so starting off i like to look at stocks that is very volatile and at the same time that's many of the stocks i kind of cover so i do cover for instance sofi under trending stocks i cover paypal under financial journey on and off uh, palantir uh, i also cover well not so much robin hood but i do a lot of options with robin hood and lucid and many others right so i started off just the video with this as well so this is earnings whispers goes over a lot of companies unveiling their earnings sometimes when there is mass sell-offs i take advantage and sometimes that's when you make the most money right because let's say uh, using Manchester United as an example uh, I've never bought them sold or whatever else but let's say they are selling off and you might feel based on the results it might be somewhat of an overreaction what you could essentially do is just sell a put meaning that you are kind of feeling it's not going to go below X amount so this one you can't really plan for it just comes and this is why options you have to sometimes it takes planning sometimes you just have to do it at that moment um, so again this is why I always like to look at a lot of these stocks so I'm gonna go over this week and potentially some things to watch for so so far starting with uh, this week so far as technicals with it at 701 it's kind of trading between this s1 and the pivot so seven dollars is a very big pivot for so whether it does continue to break down or not so let's say if there is a continuation of a sell-off and it does get close to that 670 660 range this is where i will be selling puts and I recommend you guys selling puts on any stock that you do not mind buying. And then, of course, if it goes up, you collect your premium. So essentially, if SoFi does sell off, what I am going to be doing is selling 650 puts, uh, 650 strike price puts. Um, again, I can do different updates and stuff like that. So I highly recommend you guys following my other channels, Trending Stocks and many others because yeah I'll kind of go over those as I do them but yeah essentially that is one to really watch for flip side if SoFi does start to rally that would be very good but at the same time the fear and greed index uh, right now is under the fear category so people's appetite for risk isn't necessarily going to be there so if SoFi for instance does have a run to let's say around this 740 this is where on the flip side, I would be selling a covered call. Or if you guys don't have options, just selling a call for the 750 strike price. And so yeah, essentially even last week when it was at 780, give or take, I sold $8 calls. And yeah, you, you get some pretty good money. It's not all that much, so you're not gonna get crazy rich from options, you can definitely do so. But I think that just, uh, requires a little bit more risk and as i've stated in the past there's a fine line between investing and 
gambling. My end goal, like I said, is to be as risk adverse as possible, take advantage of swings. And sometimes I'm wrong, so be it. Like uh, I do post on Twitter every single at the end of every week. I was 505 for my options. I was five out of six for my options, so forth. So generally it's a high percentage of success just to collect premiums where they do expire worthless because that's kind of the end goal. Um, again, if you guys don't know options, I'm sure a lot of this sounds very foreign to you. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments, but essentially that is what I'm going to be doing with SoFi. Um, similarly, if it does actually start to sell off, uh, so if it does break below, I'd say around that six, 80 range then selling seven dollar puts um or sorry selling seven dollar calls might be advantageous as well it all depends on price action that is basically what you do and yeah so that is stock number one paypal so paypal um you definitely do need a larger account if you're going to be trading paypal options because merely the dollar value right um but PayPal, I made some pretty good money. I sold quite a lot in calls. And even though PayPal, like it was really breaking out, it actually made a new 52 week high this week. I did sell $73 calls naked. So meaning if they were going to be exercised, I would be shorting PayPal. But I think just based on the market circumstances, the technicals, it is all pointing to kind of more of a additional pullback. And so I did sell 73 and I, I got that. So I made, was it $400, $500 or closer to 600 just based on that. Again, just weekly options. And on Friday, I actually did two different, or on Friday, I actually did one additional thing with PayPal is I sold a $69 put. So meaning if it was going to be below that, I'd buy it at 69. I paid roughly, I think it was 34 cents for that, uh, give or take. So I'm at a little bit of a profit right now. So I do have already in my account 200 shares of PayPal. So uh, again, this is how I can be short sometimes on stocks, how I could be long sometimes, but generally, uh, kind of make money and plus with my 200 shares now that i have of paypal what i could kind of do um, immediately is i could start writing covered calls or i could just wait for a quick spike and sell the actual stock itself and rinse and repeat right so it will all come down to this week but i feel like last week was more of an overreaction somewhat justified but i think monday is going to have a nice recovery so i'm going to hold on to my paypal shares so uh, again this might be a little bit more boring for you guys but just kind of take from what you will and yeah add a lot of these to your watch list because volatile stocks definitely make for good premiums for options. And even looking on PayPal's technicals, it is a fine line. So most likely it will bounce off of this pivot point and kind of trend higher momentarily. So again, you can kind of adjust accordingly. So with PayPal, I would be, in my opinion, if there is another run to around that $70 range or possibly even 72, then sell calls. Um, because the circumstances in the broader market I don't think are really justifying for it to be above those levels. So once again, that's something to do. Palantir. Palantir is a crazy, crazy beast. Um, but yet, this is one of the only stocks I can openly admit that I have made more money shorting Palantir than I have long. And I've done a couple of videos under financial journey over this last little bit. I think most recently was at like 33-ish, or I think it was like high 32s. I said that all the data points at the time are kind of pointing to a pullback. And so far it has happened. News came out on Friday after hours, I believe, that it did get added to the S&P uh, 500. So definitely that's good. Going to add a lot of liquidity. Did go up 7.85% on Friday. So if it does even remotely close, like open close to that, that is going to be a very good opportunity to sell calls. And whether they be naked or whatever else, uh, which would equate to you shorting it, this is the perfect moments on why you need to really 
take advantage of options because when it comes to Palantir, yes, it's a very good stock, but does it justify for it to go up 8% um, after hours because of its inclusion? All that does is add a lot of liquidity. Other than that, that's basically it. Nothing fundamentally changes in the business itself. And so again, I feel like there is going to be that nice pop. That is where you sell calls and then it will most likely pull back, whether it be because of the broader market or just people realize it's not somewhat kind of justified. So that's just me ranting a little bit. So definitely stay tuned for that. So that's what I will be doing is selling calls straight out the gate, collecting a lot of premium when there is a lot of optimism. And that's how you make a lot of money. And just to put it in like a uh, comparison, every single week I make roughly between five to a thousand dollars in just premiums, just just premiums whatsoever. Very rarely do I ever close out my options prematurely. I always just hold them to expiry because I trust my gut, trust my technicals for the most part. As I said, I'm usually about eighty percent, ninety percent on point. Um, because I pretty much do things risk, risk adverse. Um, so Palantir, if it does have another pop, that is a perfect opportunity to sell um, calls. Same goes for Robinhood. Robinhood, very volatile, similar to SoFi and Palantir, and perfect opportunity to always sell calls every single spike. And this is also another one that Actually, to be fully honest, I don't think I've ever made any money on Robinhood long. Actually, no, I did. Um, mostly, I have made a lot of money shorting Robinhood. So um, this one definitely just hits the mark for volatility, has a lot of liquidity through the options. So if it does have another push above 20 to around that $21 range, then yeah, sell calls easily. So whether you don't always have to do weekly options on Monday, right? Um, you can do them pretty much even Friday afternoon. Sometimes I, I do options. So like I sold puts on Neo, $5 strike price Friday afternoon. And I got an extra 50 bucks. It wasn't anything crazy. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. But um, yeah, you got to just take advantage of the scenario at the time. So based on Robinhood, this is another one of those stocks that they is having a full technical breakdown. So it might bounce off of this pivot point right here and kind of trend higher. But yeah, definitely uh, that one is one to add to your watch list and Lucid. So I really like Lucid. Fundamentally, I know it is moving in the right direction. But similarly, you can kind of see every time it does spike, it sells off. And so I think that is a very well-known thing. Um, it generally does kind of have uh, higher lows, if that makes sense. So it is moving up, but again, every single time it does spike, this is a very good opportunity to sell covered calls. Or if you don't have any shares of Lucid, you can always be naked, uh, naked uh, calls. And yeah, that way get some premiums in, very risk adverse in my opinion. Or um, you can always do completely opposite of what I'm doing. Just buy calls and puts. That is how you make the real, real money. But I think the level of risk that you do need in capital is a little bit higher. Um, so again, you guys do whatever for your vote. So basically, these are the stocks that I do watch every single week. And yeah, so I'll, I'll be a little bit more uh, transparent. So when I do options, I will pretty much do a video and go over what I did. Maybe I'll kind of group it into the actual stock itself and say what I did, why I did it. And yeah, you guys do whatever floats your boat and let me know your thoughts on like the stocks that I do typically watch. Is there any others that you do really like to do options on reoccurring? And whether it be selling covered calls, buying calls, selling puts, like whatever it is, let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And make sure you guys, one last thing, take advantage of this promo. Simply sign up for a new account, throw $100 at it, and they give you five free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. So this is a kick-ass deal. Link in the description below and also the comments. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching.